welcome to Holy Cross. For some of you, this is your first time here. We pray for the Holy Spirit to, to lead us and to join us together as a family of God. We have the Allen family who come from Holy Cross in Colorado. Yeah. And they're here on vacation. Yeah. So they're in Holy Cross at home. <laughs> and uh, um, Randy's brother Jerry's with us. We welcome Jerry. Corinne and her husband Stuart are here. And uh, Christy uh, from California. And she's uh, visiting today. And Sandra's back. So, members, if it wasn't for our guest today, oh, why? <laughs> Anyways, we won't go there. I am glad you're here. And today is Good Shepherd Sunday. It's one of those times of the Sundays that I just love. And when we think of the, the, the term Good Shepherd, it brings us comfort. And it tells us about a, a God who loves us. And John says... We see love displayed in the Good Shepherd's laying down his life for us. But there is another side to this Good Shepherd. And that is that he's a mighty God. The one who defeated death and sin and the devil. And he's the one that allowed Peter and James now, as we read in the epistle, uh, in the Acts lesson today, to boldly confess him, who just weeks earlier were hiding him and were afraid of their lives. And so today we come and give God praise for our good shepherd, whose name is Jesus. Let us stand for opening hymn, Savior like a shepherd lead us.
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Lord Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. I know my own, my own know me. And just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, I lay down my life for my sheep. And I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. All we like sheep have gone astray, and we have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on our Savior Jesus the iniquity of us all. Let us now join together as we confess our sins to God our Father, and together we speak. Lord, we truly have wandered away from our shepherd like lost sheep. We have sinned in what we have done, in what we have left undone. We now love you with our whole heart. We do not love our neighbors as ourselves. And yet you sent your son Jesus to be our Savior, since Jesus is also God himself in human flesh and blood. He has become our true shepherd, going out into the wilderness to find us when we were lost, and who then brings us home rejoicing. Forgive our wandering sins, dear Lord, and let our rejoice every day over the Savior who has found us when we were lost. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, he forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. And may the Lord, who has begun this good work in us, bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God of mercy, God of might, by your son's love he laid down his life for his sheep, and by the power of his holiness he gives us new life. Grant us to love you with our whole heart and boldly to proclaim his victory to the whole world. With the same Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for the reading. sisters. 
If anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need, but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person? Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. This is how we know that we belong to the truth and how we set our hearts at rest in his presence. If our hearts condemn us, we know that God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Dear friends, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God and receive from him anything we ask because we keep his commands and do what pleases him. And this is his command, to believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and to love one another as he commanded us. The one who keeps God's commands lives in him, and he in them. And this is how we know that he lives in us. We know it by the spirit he gave us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us stand for the reading of the Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus is speaking. He says, I am the good shepherd, and the shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and he runs away. And then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he has a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. But I am a good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of the sheep pen. And I must bring them also. And they too will listen to my voice and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. And the reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. And I have authority to lay it down and the authority to take it up again. And this command I receive from my father. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. You may be seated as we sing the hymn, King of, The King of Love My Shepherd Is.
and God our Father, and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He is risen! He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. On this Good Shepherd Sunday, it is fitting that we begin with the 23rd Psalm. And this is a psalm that tells us about our God and how he meets every one of our needs, from our physical needs to our spiritual needs to our eternal needs. And, and he provides it all. And so I invite you now to read this beautiful psalm with me. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff they comfort me. And thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And thou anointest my head with oil, my cup running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. What thoughts, what words, what feelings come to mind when you hear that song? Shout it out. Protection. Protection. Love. Love. Comfort. What'd you say? Comfort. Comfort. Lots of feelings, isn't there? I'm safe. I've got somebody who loves me. And I always ask this question whenever I read it. I said, I wonder when David actually wrote this song in his life. Was it after the confrontation with Goliath? Or maybe after his, he survived that period of time when King Saul was after him, trying to kill him? Those certainly were times when he walked through the valley of the shadow of death, weren't they? Or was it after he committed adultery with Bathsheba and then murdered her husband to hide, to hide, try to hide it? And then that son born to this event, to this act. He died. That surely was a time when David's soul needed his Savior's restoring his forgiveness and when he, needed, when he needed to be put back on that path of righteousness. Or was it after he survived the mutiny of his son Absalom against his kingship by fleeing to the land of the Philistines and there pretending that he was, well, a lunatic? And surely it was in that situation that the Lord was providing for him, preparing the table in the presence of his enemies. Or maybe it was when Saul anointed his head with oil when he anointed him as king of Israel. Or just maybe it was at the end of his life. When he looked back at all the this and all the things that happened and he wondered, he wondered how I ever survived. I shouldn't be here, either because of my own sins or the sins of others. I should have been dead a long, long time ago. But I had a shepherd all along, even when it didn't seem like it. Even when I was being really stupid and sinful. But surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I want you to think back on your own life. It really doesn't matter how old you are or how young you are. I want you to think about the sins and the stupid things you have done. The dangers you've avoided or the dangers you survived. The times you wandered away or rebelled. What or who are your Bathshebas or your Goliaths or your Sauls or your Absalom? Should you even be here? Should you still have the privilege of being a child of God? I look at my life and I look at some of the things that I've done and I've done some crazy things. I should have been killed when I was 16 in a car wreck. In fact, I should have, shouldn't even be here because when my mom was pregnant with me, she got caught on a bridge that was washed out with a flood of water that came down and they found us three miles down the river and my mom didn't swim. I can go on and on. I was blown off of a roof a 
couple times. Doing things I shouldn't have been doing, probably. But you understand, you can go through the same thing, can't you? There are times for each and every one of us when we wonder, why am I even here? How did God do this? And the scary part is, we don't even know half of it, do we? So how good indeed it is this morning to have a good shepherd. David was a shepherd himself. And he knew something about that and what it meant to be a shepherd. And, you know, it wasn't an easy job as some people thought it was. It wasn't out getting the sun's sand and just watching sheep graze. There was a lot more to that job than that. It meant watching out for the young and the old, caring for the rebellious and the tame, finding good pasture and good water, building up, binding up the injured, looking for the lost, and even killing the beast that came upon his flock, looking for an easy meal. And yet David thought, this is exactly what my Lord has done for me. He's watched out for me in my youth. And he's watched out for me in my old age. Giving me the law when I needed it. When my sin needed confronting. And then giving me the refreshing food and drink of the gospel. The forgiveness and life that I need. Searching for me and bring me back when I wandered and rebelled. And caring for me and binding me up when all seemed hopeless and lost. And standing between me and that satanic wolf that was looking to devour me. And then fighting all the Goliaths of death before me. So then in the end, David could confidently say, Surely goodness and mercy have followed me all the, my days of my life. But he could add on that ending. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now, such confidence to us might seem foolish. Especially when you, we consider David's life and our lives. How inconsistent we are. How often stupid and foolish and prone to wander into other pastures where the grass always seems greener. And the sheep seem to have, been, on the other side, seem to have, be having a lot more fun than we are. How sheepy we often are. Knowing ourselves, maybe we shouldn't be so confident this morning. Or maybe such confidence seems far away from you and beyond your grasp. When one little word or wrong look from a doctor can make you tremble. And oh, how we've had that happen in this congregation in these last months. One word, and all of a sudden your whole world falls apart. When you see what's happening to Christians around the world and to religious freedom in our own country. And when we look at this, we feel timid, we feel weak, like sheep under attack, sheep that have no shepherd. And such confidence somehow seems impossible. And then, then when we look at ourselves, when we look at our heart and our life, that is, Exactly the conclusion we should come to that our hearts do not condemn us when held up next to the holiness God requires and desires of us. And so we should not be confident at all. But listen to what the Apostle John told us in the epistle. He says, whenever our hearts condemn us, as it rightly does, God is greater than our heart and he knows everything. Or in other words, our condemning heart doesn't get the last word. Or our heart isn't the final authority. Because God is. The God who knows our heart and knows our fears and knows our inconsistency and knows our failures even better than we do. He's our good shepherd. Not because we're holy. But just the opposite, because we're not holy. Not because we can make it on our own, because... Just because we can't make it on our own. Because we need the forgiveness. We need the life and that only he can give. And this morning I can tell you that he does give it. So that when our heart condemns us, there's another voice of our good shepherd that says, Do not be troubled. Do not be troubled because I forgive you. 
And so John began to teach him. And what does he say? He says, dear friends, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence before God. There it is. There's that word. That word that we need to hear. Confidence. The confidence we need. For it's from God. It's from his word through which the spirit fills us with faith and fills us with life and hope. That faith and hope that, that enables us to live in faith toward God and love toward one another. Which enables us, as John goes on to say, to keep his commandments. Huh? What's that mean? In order to have him as our shepherd, in order, not to, in order to have him as our shepherd, but because he is our shepherd, keeping them, treasuring them, guarding them, and doing them, because he's keeping them, and treasuring them, and guarding them, and most of all, caring for us. For he is our good shepherd. And through his word and life and death, he teaches and defines for us what love is. So now instead of being rebellious, we, well, we're free to do what pleases God. Which is not only doing good for others because we know he is caring and providing for us, but it's repenting when we don't. And forgiving those who sin against us. And so John says, whatever you ask, we receive from him. Forgiveness, it's done. Love, it's done. Faith, it's done. Done! And that's a good word. A confident word. And the same confidence that enabled David to be so sure, the same confidence that enabled Peter and John now to stand before the, before the Jewish council and speak the truth they didn't want to hear. Because Peter and John knew it was done. That Jesus' death and resurrection was done. And therefore, death was done. Their sin was done. Satan and hell, it was done. And even though this world is still a scary place, and we all can attest to that this morning, can't we? As we're dealing with all kinds of uncertainties, what's the doctor going to tell me this week? COVID, it's still there. We're still wearing masks. Vaccines, which one's safe and unsafe? Racial unrest, racial, ra racial, racist unrest, which we hear uh, daily. Mass shootings that are all also happening. We can go on and on and on, but the tension in this life is getting us down. And I don't know about you, but I think we're all tired and confused and overwhelmed and drained. And because of that, we need to be here this morning to call upon our good shepherd to believe and know that he is our Lord. And what did John say? He's the only name given among men by which we must be saved. And so when these days are hard, we need to cry out to the Lord because our help comes only from the Lord. And we can do it with confidence. For that name made the lame men walk. That name raised people from the dead. And this is the name that you and I know as well. It is our confidence. It's the name into which we have been baptized. The name in which we have been absolved. The name of our good shepherd. Our good shepherd. Oh, what a good shepherd he was. He saw that satanic wolf setting upon his flock. But he didn't run away like a hundred hair like all the rest of them. But he came and he stepped in and defended and protected us, letting that wolf sink his teeth into him instead of us to fill his belly and howl with delight and then be devoured. He devoured the shepherd. So there's nothing to stop him now from devouring you and me except. And don't ever forget that word except. Except what happened on the third day. As we are celebrating it every, this season, as we celebrate it each time we gather together, the wolf received a rude surprise. The shepherd was alive. He wasn't dead. He couldn't die again. And because of it, we are safe. 
And so, did you hear? Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. Not only David's good shepherd, but I'm your good shepherd. And I know you, that you might know me. That you listen to my voice. And that you follow me. For in my flock, in my pasture, is the good food you need. It's the water that refreshes. The pasture is one of forgiveness and life. And in my pasture, you shall not want. Do we understand that term? Because in Jesus, we lack nothing. We have everything we need and much more. And then he says, I will provide what you need and even more because your cup is going to overflow. And though the world is still a scary place and the enemy is all around us, Jesus says, here, here's where I prepare my table right here in the midst of it all. He says that to us this morning as he says, take and eat. This is my body. Take and drink. This is my blood. The food that strengthens you, a spiritual meal that forgives you. It's a meal that you need to sustain you. And then he says, my rod and thy staff, which is the law and the gospel, will keep you and you will leave fear no evil, not even death. Why? Because he says, I went through that valley. I came out alive and will take you through that same valley and you're going to be alive too. Yes, it's true. My goodness and my mercy shall follow you, be with you all the days of your life. Because you are my child. And even those days when it doesn't seem like I am with you, I am there. And I promise you, you're going to dwell in my house forever. What a beautiful psalm Psalm 23 is. It's a psalm that is filled with the very promises of God. Promises to you and promises to me. The promises of our good shepherd. And there are no maybes in that psalm. No conditional statements. Just promises. And what he, uh, he has done and what he will do for us. And that's our confidence too. Not in ourself, but in his word and what he has done. Not in ourself, but in his life and death. And then back to life for us. Not in ourself, but in faithfulness and consi consistency. And so this morning we hear his voice. A voice that says, follow me. And we follow him where he lives, lead, leads. Why? Because we have a good shepherd. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Let us stand now as we confess our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. When we speak this creed together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of His Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made. Being of one substance with the Father by whom all things were made, who was man and for our salvation, came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended to heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one Christian apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the Lord. You may be seated, and that's this time as our offer. We're not passing the plate again, that's because of COVID, but we just offer ourselves and nothing else. And so we sing that beautiful little children's hymn, I Am Jesus Little. Lord.
lost our family. <laughs> Maybe we can do it a cappella. What do you think, Kirsten? <laughs> Let's try it. shepherd of Israel who has sought out his sheep and has gathered us with them into one flock who keep us always in his fold and to guard us from every wolf and snare Lord in your mercy for the church and flock of God that as new life was breathed into the world through the resurrection of Jesus so now by his Holy Spirit new life would be breathed into her also and that freed by his gospel we may always confess the name of Jesus Christ, the only name given among men by which we must be saved. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. for an increase in the love of Christian brothers and sisters to one another, especially within our homes, that we may daily show our confidence in God by deed and truth, laying down our lives as Christ first did for us. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. for the gift of good government, that as the Paschal Lamb has wrought peace between man and God, so he can, would also grant peace and good days also to our citizens and between the nations of the world, and that we and all our neighbors may lead quiet lives and godly contentment. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. on this day we celebrate life as Maverick Grady Blizzard was born yesterday to Matthew and his wife Lexi in Pennsylvania. Sherry and Pat Mackey are proud grandparents, and we ask you to look upon this beautiful new family and bless little Maverick that he may grow up in your presence. Lord, in your mercy. In thanksgiving for our risen Christ, the first fruits from the dead, who has secured forgiveness for our troubled consciences, that he would also bless with temporal help those who suffer. Today, we continue to pray for Sean Brennan who is in ICU fighting uh, collapsed lung and all kinds of things as a result of COVID. We also pray for Christopher Rodriguez, for Sherry Mole as he continues to fight cancer, for Creighton, who's in some spiritual need. We look up Julie Nair, and we thank you, Lord, that Julie's with us today. We pray for Tuna Trujillo as he continues with his cancer treatments. Be with John Jordan, and we're thankful that he is in pain, but he's here today worshiping, and we give you praise, Lord. Be with his mom, Eileen, uh, who had a fall. We lift up Jackie's dad, Winston Benjamin, who has been hospitalized all week, but should be getting out tomorrow. We pray for Roy Robertson, Clifford Ricks, Kim Leve, Randy Escobar, Michelle London. We pray especially for Greta, as she is... And this has been a rough week for her, and she had more procedures done. Lord, uh, may we surround her with our love, with our care, with our phone calls, and with the cards. Let her know that she is loved. We pray for Linda Arney, 
Carlisa Shaver, Matthew Harden, Vera Durham, Mark and Kelly Peterson, Millie and Joel DeSante, for Jim Culpepper and Mary Lehman, Pastor Storr and Edie Mobley, be with Donna Kinder and Linda Tony Brown and Shelly Moore, for Eric Romero and Karen Marquise. And we just learned word this morning that we need to pray for the Janky family as Taylor Kress, who is now married and has a baby, little James JJ, Jennifer's daughter, uh, Peggy's granddaughter. Uh, this baby is not that old and now is in the NICU unit on a ventilator, not doing well. Lord, we pray for your healing hand to be upon this new life. And we also today lift up Don Clippinger as he undergoes testing. Grant aid, not only in this moment, but even was more so true, give the help to those according to your will. But today we also lift up Debbie Sanchez, whose father we've been praying for, Ray Penman, lost his battle with cancer this week. We pray for the Smith family as Carolyn Barr's sister Barr also lost her battle with cancer this week. And then we learned early in the week that Janet Oden, Oden a former member of Holy Cross, went to her heavenly home too. Be with all three. Now all three of these individuals are in the presence of Jesus. But be with their families in this time of loss and show them the beauty of the empty tomb and the resurrection. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. And Lord, we come to you seeking your help and recognizing that life is precious. And as we come to you, we pray that these senseless acts of violence that we witness and hear of every day will stop. Another hit and run, another shooting, another mass shooting. And in fear, we feel a sense of lawlessness abounding. And once again, our nation is mourning the loss of lives. We pray for the victims and loved ones of those who are hurt, as well as those who are injured. And help us to help those who are victims of violent crime. Again and again, we react in horror to these violent acts, but we struggle to agree on how to stop them. In the spirit of Easter, let us pray for renewed reverence for the gift of life and faith that by the grace of God, we can always begin again and work toward peace. And may we all recognize that we are made in the image and likeness of God and continue to do what we can to end this senseless violence and to live together in peace. And as we walk with you, Jesus, continue to remind us that there is always hope, even when we seem to be at a dead end. Today, Lord, we pray for our police officers and those who protect and serve us, for our political leaders and all people of goodwill to once again examine this issue and propose and propose prudential, prudential solutions. Lord, in your mercy. Today, Lord, we come to your table and hear that you, the Good Shepherd, would call our fears in this valley of shadow of death to the holy table here prepared in the presence of our enemies. And that you would give us repentance and increase of faith, and that in every tribulation or besetting sin, that you would lead us to find comfort and strength in the overflowing mercy given to us in this sacrament. Lord, in your mercy. And Lord God, out of your fatherly goodness, you have remembered us poor, miserable sinners and given your beloved Son to be our shepherd not only to nourish us by his word, but also to defend us from sin, death, and the devil. Grant us your Holy Spirit that even as the shepherd knows us and helps in every affliction, that we also may know him, trust him, seek help and comfort in him, heartily obey his voice and obtain eternal salvation through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Um, and it's this time we come to the sacrament, and if you do not have your, uh, your uh, bread and wine with you, the body and blood of Christ, uh, there are the tables in the narthex, make sure you, you have one. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. And it's truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. 
Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he has now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. And therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing.